Hey guys, Ryan here, and in this video, I'm going to be covering how to install, configure, and use Mango HUD on Linux. So, what exactly is Mango HUD? Well, chances are, if you've been gaming on Windows for a while, then you may have heard of some software called MSI Afterburner. Now, this is a piece of software that allows you to overclock your NVIDIA or AMD graphics card, as well as provide you with a heads up display or HUD that shows you the current clock speeds or utilization of your. CPU, GPU and your RAM. It also shows you the current frame rate of the game as well as current temperatures. Whereas on Linux we do have alternatives such as Green with Envy, which is used to overclock Nvidia graphics cards or Core Control for AMD cards. But that being said there's only really one option when it comes to a performance overlay and that option is Mango HUD which does share many of the features of the heads up display of Afterburner such as allowing you to display the current clock speeds or utilization of your system's resources, the current frame rate of a game, as well as temperatures once again. But in addition to that, it also allows you to display more Linux specific metrics, such as what version of DXVK or Wine you're using. And it will also allow you to enable VSync or apply a frame rate limit, either globally or on a per game basis. Now, personally, I wish that Mango Hood was properly ported across the windows as I find it's a great alternative to just using the more clunky, at least in my opinion, Afterburner. So how do you exactly install Mango Hood? Well, the installation method will differ slightly depending on your distribution. However, that being said, in most cases, I would still recommend using the GitHub installation script which is provided, as this will not only install the latest version of Mango Hood on your system, but it will also install any missing dependencies that are actually required for Mango Hood to work. So to do that, what we need to do first is scroll to the top of the GitHub page. And on the right hand side, the section here where it says releases, click on that. And then from here, just download the latest build. You'll know which one it is because it's the one that ends in tar.gz. Once that's downloaded, extract the archive. And inside a subfolder, you'll find there's two files. That is mangohoodpackage.tar as well as mangohood-setup.sh. The next we need to open up a terminal window in this particular directory and then run the following command which is dot slash mangohood dash setup dot sh and make sure you put install at the end and once this process is completed mangohood will now be installed on your system so now that mangohood is installed we can now decide what metrics we want to have displayed by editing the mangohood config file now by default this will be located at a root directory then go to USR, share, not the singer, doc, I was gonna say not the doctor. <laughs> and inside here, there should be a folder called Mango Hood. There's a lot of libraries in here. Ah, there we go, Mango Hood. And as you can see, there's a file here that's called mangohood.config.example. So let's take a copy of that. And let's go back to our home directory. So first we need to enable hidden files and folders. And you'll find there's a folder called dot config. Now the dot basically means it's a hidden file. So you want to open up that. And inside here you'll see the subfolder called Mango Hood. Now this was actually created earlier by the script that we ran, which is another reason why the script method is probably the best way to do it. Then here you want to paste the copied file and then just rename that to mangohood.config. Alright, let's open this file up, which will open up a text editor. As you can see, there's quite an extensive list of parameters here, but each line should tell you exactly what it does when you enable it. Although by default, you'll find that only a few things will be enabled, such as GPU or CPU utilization, and then what your current frame rate is. In either case, to enable a parameter, simply just remove the little hash symbol here, which will uncomment it. And once you're done, say the file is normal with Control and S. So now that we've configured Mango HUD to our liking, we've got all our parameters we want to be set up to be shown, it's time to use it with some games. Now for Steam games, this is incredibly easy. All you need to do is right click on the properties of the game, and then in the launch options down here, make sure you've got the word Mango HUD, or one word, or lowercase, then followed by the percentage sign, the word command, and then close the argument with a percentage sign. Press X once you're done with that. Now what that means is the next time you launch that game, Mango HUD overlay will be applied at the top right hand corner, unless of course you change the location of it within the config file. Now alternatively, if you've got games installed outside of Steam's, for example, installed using Lutris, then the process is slightly different. 
So in that case, you want to right click on the game or launcher that you've got installed using Lutris, go to configure, and then under the systems option here tab, scroll down about halfway down so you get to the section here where it says display, and just make sure you've enabled the toggle here where it says FPS counter, manga hood in brackets. Give that a good old toggle, click save, and then the next time you launch a game through that particular service or that game, manga hood once again will be applied at the top right hand corner. Okay, dokie, okay. so let's launch up a game and we'll check how it appears. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna use Crash Bandicoot 4, which is probably one of the hardest games I've ever played, but hey, I'm getting old. So in conclusion, Mango Hood is a fantastic little utility and I use it all the time to monitor performance when I'm gaming on Linux and I think it's a viable alternative to the Windows counterpart MSI Afterburner. Thank you very much for watching guys and as always if you did find this video helpful you know what to do, don't forget to leave a like and also subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the near future. Thanks again guys, see you again next time, bye!